Welcome to the channel, my name is Matt. If you've ever wondered how the public clouds like AWS or Azure work behind the scenes, then you're in the right place. In this series, I'll build out a home lab using bare metal servers, kind of like this. And I'll call this lab a heavy metal cloud. In this video, I'll kick things off by answering a few questions. Number one, I'll answer the why. Why build a cloud using bare metal servers? Number two, what does the architecture look like? And number three, who is this for? Who is the audience? Okay, let's start with the why. One of my goals with this channel is to build out healthcare apps, especially related to insurance. And I plan to use a healthcare specification called Fire. Now, there are a lot of ways I could deploy these apps. I could use a single bare metal server. And assuming the server is running Ubuntu, I can install all my apps right on top of the operating system. That's one way I could do it. Another deployment option is to use containers. Containers are kind of like lightweight virtual machines, and they run in a subsystem called a container runtime. You would then package up your application into a Docker image, and a Docker image is kind of like the blueprint for a house. It isn't the real house, but it tells you how to build one. Executing the Docker image gives us a running container. Back to the home analogy, a running container is like taking those blueprints and building an actual house, where the container is the house. So this is a pretty good option for deploying our application, but there are a few issues. Let's say everything is running as expected, and then one day your server goes down, and now you have an outage, and your clients are not happy. So I know what you're thinking, let's just add a second server to the mix, and that makes sense. But once you connect more than one server together, life starts to get really hard. If the line connecting your two servers goes down, you now have to solve some interesting and hard problems. For example, how do you direct traffic to the server that's working instead of the one that's down? And what if you have a database running on both servers? You now have to deal with something called the cap theorem, where you have to choose. Once the line between the servers is cut, you have a dilemma. You can either access one of the servers and have consistent data, or you can access both the servers, but the data might be a little out of date. So you have to choose access or consistency, but you can't have both. And it's these distributed computing problems that are really at the heart of this series. Now, you could use a public cloud, and that would solve a lot of these problems for you, but we really wouldn't learn anything that way. And the point of this series is really to learn how these clouds are solving these hard problems. To do this, I'll be starting with five physical or bare metal servers. One of the servers will handle the networking services like DNS and DHCP. The next server will handle shared services that'll be required for my applications. Things like single sign-on, authentication, and a place to store those Docker images that I talked about earlier. The last three servers will contain our applications or our workloads. Having three will give us a lot of flexibility. I'll show you how you can take one of the servers offline and still keep our applications running. When we're done, the overall architecture will look something like this. But don't worry about the details right now. I'll be diving into each part of this diagram in the coming weeks. And now for the last question. Who is this video series for? Who is the audience? There are a lot of YouTube channels that build out these bare metal clusters, but often the target audience is infrastructure DevOps engineers. For this series, I'm creating these videos for two groups. Number one would be developers who want to understand more about the infrastructure. So everything I'll be doing will be viewed through the lens of a software developer. The second group will be managers, maybe up to the CTO level. And for this group, my goal is to give some theory about the technologies involved and to help connect the dots. Okay, so we have a lot to cover. In my next video, I'll take a closer look at the hardware. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.